I mean, that was the one with the used the love TKO break. It was um, that was huge over here, yeah. the Armad track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that record. Yeah. Oh wow. What else? I mean, the Casey and Jojo. Fill us in on that one. Again, the guy Frank Fitzpatrick, I'm music supervisor. He says I'm doing another movie. You know, and I got a chance to, you know, these are the artists I can work and do a song with. And um, they yeah, Casey and Jojo, and I said, oh, okay, I know them. Um, in the studio it was magic. You know, I had always wanted to meet them because we come from the group library like we did with them. You know, um, there's a few things I had to say when I got in the studio and I started producing them. I was like, man, you guys remember when we were in the Virgin Islands and we all got into it and we were talking about different groups and it, we laughed and it was fun. It was a fun thing. Yeah. Those guys are perfectionists. I didn't have to do anything. I just felt the thing. Yeah, and it shows. It does. I mean, they're they're just they're classic people as well. I mean, they're classic artists and big favourites on NJS3. Um, I mean, if you look back at that point, Portrait seemed to step out of the limelight. Um, and there was a Jap only release of the picturesque album. Was that ever due for a US release? What's the story behind that album? Well, it, you know what happened was, man. Capital. This is now with all the mergers of the record companies now that they're doing. We were part of that first thing when they started downsizing, like when the industry started downsizing. Um, I remember we, were, we had a manager at the time named Herb Trowick. Herb Trowick told us, right now it's not a good situation. They're going to be downsizing. It's not going to be uh, an urban division at Capitol Records. He says, I'm, I know this information because I'm in tight with all the presidents. He says, what y'all should do is, so how deep is your love of? And go get some international because we didn't want to do it at first. The idea of how deep is your love was Candyman, the rapper. He was a friend of mine. We were in the studio. He says, Mike, you guys should do a remake of the beat. He's how deep is your love. He says, it's sold 25 million, 45 and staying alive. So if you try, maybe you can get a million right now. You've got cool momentum. So, I'm good. so with, with, that, with that said, um, her father was said, go over and get acquainted with overseas because they're going to love you forever once you get in with them. Um, you know, and that was the downside of what actually started happening um, with uh, the overseas stuff. Then we started doing records for overseas. So um, the picture rest came from, they had an artist named Park Chin Young, a big, huge artist in Korea. We were like his favorite group. This guy was like a prince. When he come over here, I mean, the streets would stop. I mean, all the Korean people would go crazy. Um, so he said, well, I like group in America. That's my favorite group. I want to do songs with him. So that's how that happened. It was, it was because of him, of being his favorite group. So how many did it sell in Japan? Uh, 300,000, which is, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? that was great. Yeah, that is. I mean, it's um, it's funny you should mention that. I I managed to pick up a CD single of How Deep Is Your Love, and there's a, a portrait urban mix on there that I'd never heard before that just a little did different... You do it? Sorry? I don't think I did. Oh, How Deep Is Your Love? Yeah, it says Portraits Urban Mix, and it sounds like it's got your flavour on it. And I just got it. It's on Capital. Yeah, it says Mixed by Portrait. I gotta hear, man. Can you send that? To, I want that. Do you have this and die? I would go crazy if you sent me this and die. I would lose my mind. Yeah, I'll send you that today. I got it. I literally got it yesterday. It's the original promo CD single off the um, All That Matters album. So it's the actual original, and it's got uh, the Portraits Urban Mix, and it's uh, it's got different vocal arrangements, everything. It's it just it just smooths it out and has it more of an urban crossover feel than the uh, you know the sort of a cappella feel of the original. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I need that stuff. Please. Oh yeah, no problem. So next, then for for portrait, there there was a massive buzz in the UK. A, a single called "Don't Be Shy" surfaced, um, and every portrait was fan was filled with excitement. I think it used a a break from Bernard Wright, Master Rocker. It was an absolute classic. Um, I mean, what where was that from? What was what was the next steps then? Because it wasn't on Capitol. No, that was us recording. At the studio, just kind of recording. And my uh, Phillips and I were here at a studio at the time, and we were just recording. And we had thought about doing a record again, but we were going to switch over to Virgin when the capital started going through the, 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 the stuff we knew Virgin. 
Virgin was a subsidiary, a partner with them, so we were like, we're going to do a record on Virgin. Um, a guy named um, Max Goose, who wanted to sign us at Virgin, he had our CD, and it's funny because he said, I just had a meeting with Snoop, man. He said, when he seen you guys' first CD on my desk, he said, you better do a record with them. He said, so, so at that time, we were getting ready to do a record. Yeah, it was um you did some work with a, a jazz is it a saxophonist? Um I can't remember his name now, but that, that was on the B side of it. Do you remember that guy's name? He was like a singer stroke saxophonist and it was a track featuring portrait around that time. Paul Taylor or somebody like that. You, you talk about Paul Taylor? Yeah, Paul Taylor. Oh no, that happened that was just a gig. That was just a happen we had a manager. I mean that was on the B side of the of that of that twelve inch when it was um released stroke bootlegged over here. Yeah, if you got a copy of that, you can give it to me because I don't have a copy. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry, we can proceed. That's okay, I can edit all this out, it's no problem. Um so then came Faith Evans, and it was a bit of it was a huge crossover hit. So how did you hook up with um, How did the hook up with Puffy come about? Um, you know what happened? Um, interesting story. I was down and out. Um, we were kind of slowed down. We didn't know what was going with us as a group. I just separated with my son's mother, so I was I I left and stopped living in my studio. You know, um, you know, just hey, you guys, you and the kid, you know, you guys, you know, taken care of. I'm just gonna leave and start living in my studio. So at that point, that was a hard time for me in my life because I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I knew I was versatile and I, I knew I could always switch, but you know, I was sad. You know, I felt like um, I wasn't married to her, but we were together five years. We had a son, so I kind of felt like I failed. Coming from a family of, of, of five, and my parents are still together, and it's been 40 years. So I, at that time, I felt like a failure, although I was proud of what happened musically. I was still feeling like, well, okay, it stopped. What are we going to do? My family stuff, I kind of failed. So I'm living in my studio. Now, me and Battle Cat grew up together. We went to junior high school and elementary school together. So... You know, he was going through things at the time, too. It's an interesting story. He calls me up and he says, you know, he says, Mike, uh, do you remember coming to your mom's house? And this is a true story. He says, do you remember coming to your mom's house, driving, and we seen each other at the gas station, and I was going over my mom's house. I said, yeah. He said, do you remember how you went to the truck of your car and you showed me your, your first gold portrait plaque? And he said, do you remember I went to my trunk and showed you my domino plaque? He said, we were both going to each other's mom's house at the same time to show, you know, just to show our plaque. So he says, man, I'll never forget that. And he said, we went to elementary school and junior high school together. We should be proud, man. Pick yourself up. He says, man, look, Faith Evans is in town. I found out. 